Do you guys remember back in April or May when I had two hives and I said we had room for 10 new hives this year? We got space for 10 new hives. 10 new hives. Let's see what happens this year. We did it. So these are the lids. These are gonna go over the top of the outer cover. So it's two inch foam. This is fiberglass on the outside. This stuff is called Atlas board. Yeah, I just cut a two inch rim and glued it on with the foam. There is a video about how I make these in my uh, first year of beekeeping. So the reason I put the insulation on the outside of the hive is because condensation will form when moist air that is warm hits a cold surface. Water will condense on that cold surface. Right now the coldest part of the hive is this outside cover which is exposed to the elements and it's there's cold air out here this gets cold and then the inside of this is cold and then the warm air hits that and it will condense and then drip down into the Vivaldi board, which is fine. This is why I put this on top. So now the warm air will come up through the Vivaldi board into the, uh, the top cover, the inside of the top cover, and warm that up. So the inside and outside of the cover won't be as extreme temperature as it was if this wasn't here. So hopefully the water won't condense as much on the inside of that top cover, and the, the vapor will go up and out through the Vivaldi board and out of the hive. Now I know some people suggest putting the insulation on the inside of the top cover, up in that telescoping lid. And this is why I don't do that. The bees inside are constantly creating moisture. They're breathing in there. They're evaporating the, the sugar water, all that stuff. So there's moisture in the hive coming up. It's hitting the cold outside lid and it is condensing on the lid and this this is wet now i have a vivaldi board so it's dripping into the burlap and that's fine it's evaporating out of this front hole so if you put a piece of foam inside your cover here moisture is still going to get around that because it just always does you're going to get water is going to go behind that foam it's going to go up in the lid and you're still going to have moisture up top here but it's probably going to freeze because this is freezing cold on the outside so I want to keep this as warm as possible, which will then in turn keep this as warm as possible so that you're not having the temperature extremes from the inside to the outside and the water won't condense in that inside. And this is keeping the cold from freezing that lid. before I get into the insulation, I want to address something I keep hearing in the comments, which is basically that I'm overdoing it with, with all the plastic wrap and the foam and the bees don't need this much insulation and just let them live and, you know, the cold can't really kill the bees and all this stuff. Two things. One, I'm not telling you that you have to do this. Th this, is, this is up to you. It's your decision. If you don't want to insulate your hives, I don't care. Don't insulate your hives. I decided I want to insulate my hives, and this is what I'm doing. If someone decides that they want to insulate their hives, I'm just trying to give them some creative ideas on how to do it. That's it. That's all. And the second thing is, I don't know where you live, but I know that I live here, and I know what it's like to live here, and I know what our winters are like. And I've lived here for 11 years, and I've, I've been through these winters, and I know that there are four solid months of pretty brutal weather. Um, relentless cold lots of snow, rain, and wind. And a wooden box of bees on a hillside at 1,200 foot elevation, out in the middle of a field basically, is not gonna survive without a little help. We have weeks that will go by where the temperature doesn't get above freezing. I 
mean, day and night, just weeks. So, I mean, take your bees, a cluster of bees in a wooden box and put them in a freezer for two weeks and tell me if you think they're gonna live. So, so all this stuff I'm doing is just, I'm trying to give them a hand, that's all. I'm just a little extra help. A little wind protection, a little water protection, ventilation, and insulation for those really cold weeks that we have in the depths of our winter when that cluster is in there. It, it, if I can raise the temperature in the hive by a couple of degrees by that insulation, I'm gonna do it. Because it, those couple degrees might be the difference of them surviving or not. So I don't think I'm over insulating anything. I think I'm just trying to give them that little bit of advantage on the really brutally cold days. I have the ability to do it, I'm gonna do it. So up here in New England, they say, if you're not happy with the weather, just wait a minute and it will change. The idea behind this multi-layer system is layers. And this is how people in New England kind of go about the winter. We wear lots of layers because you have warm times and cold times, you don't know what the weather's gonna be. But I can kind of say that this is a good protection for late October to like late November. The days still get kind of warm, but the nights are chilly. We have wind, we have snow. So this is a good shell to break the wind. These go on late November through March because we have bitter cold and I want them to have that little extra layer of protection. But then at the end of March, in April, we start having warm days. I'm gonna take this off and then leave this on through April because April we still have days like this in the 30s with snow. But the days do, we do have occasional warm days and I want the sun to hit this hive and start warming it up. So this is only on for about four months of the year. This is on for about six months of the year. And I can take it on and off, you know, as I need to. So that's literally it. it. Just goes on and I'm gonna put straps on there to hold it on. The front is open to get that sun on the black. This is protecting the wind coming from the back, that north wind that blows this way. Um, and it's gonna meet up with the, the lid to keep the cover warm. And that's the concept. Coroplast, little stress relief on the corners here so I don't dig into the foam. So there's the full concept. Coroplast inside that will remain on through April. Two inches of foam around the sides and the back. The foam meets up with the lid to keep any warmth inside the hive. Any, any Where the cluster is in there, they're generating heat and it's gonna stay up in that Vivaldi board. But that the sun will hit the face and hopefully warm that up a bit. And there you go. Those things will slide right off in the end of March or April. And uh, the black coroplast will heat up nicely in, in April, early May, when we're still having freezing nights. So there it is, everyone is coroplast wrapped and fed and condensed and all that stuff. If I do nothing else this winter, I feel like I've done everything I could. I still am debating whether I want to come up here and put the uh, reflective solar walls up here. Uh, you know, I, I'm just, now everything is wrapped and these bushes have grown in nicely. So it's not as crazy wind up here as it was. And I feel like if I put the solar walls between the rows then they may create more shade for the hives behind them. So I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna work, but uh, so there might be a little bit more going on here. But basically, these hives are, are put to bed now. Now the season's not totally over. I still wanna come out here on that random warm day we get in December and lift the lids and just see what the food stores look like, what the clusters look like in there, because I, I am probably gonna put some fondant on top of all the frames. Um, we, we always get a random warm day in December when I can come out and do that. So stay tuned for that. And there's other videos that I haven't edited yet from the summer. So we may get some random summer videos thrown in here over the winter. So don't go anywhere. I've got other videos I want to do. Um, I, I filmed so much stuff and I just don't have time to edit it in the middle of the season. But now that, you know, winter's coming and I have a lot more free time, I'm going to start putting those videos out. So... Thank you so much for being supportive and watching and 
liking and subscribing and you know tell your friends share these videos and uh i, I just thank you very much for everything so see you on the next video